guys, it is Thursday, January 30th, and I would have a how-to video for you, but I am brain dead. I haven't had caffeine in about four days, so you're getting Hearthstone today, I'm sorry. Also, thank you to everyone who uh, was commenting on my tea video yesterday. You guys are really, really sweet. Um, so please, feel free to leave comments. I do read all the comments right now, and I hit 200 subscribers, so that's really exciting, but... I do read all of your comments, and if you have a question or whatnot, I will answer it. Um, I may not answer it right away, depending on where I am, um, but I will try and answer it as soon as I can. I promise I will get to it. So, oh, no, this looks good. So, um, the Fault in Our Stars trailer came out yesterday, which is uh, based. The movie is based on a book written by John Green. Um, it is my favorite of his books, and it looks really good. I'm really excited about it. Um, I think that it's very neat to see a male lead cry in a trailer. You don't often see that, so that was really cool. Um, I think it was neat to see that they kept Hazel's obvious disability with her um, cannula or whatever you call it, cannula. So I was very excited about that. Um, what else? I was really intrigued that usually when you watch a trailer and then you see the movie later and you go back and watch the trailer you realize that the parts they pulled from are from like the first two acts with maybe one scene from the end and in this one they pulled from everywhere you saw a scene that in the book you saw clips from scenes that in the book happen one happens right at the beginning it's pretty much the first scene and one's like the second last part of the second last scene in the book so that was really really neat I was really excited about that Um, what else? Uh, I guess I know a lot of people are really nervous about, um, you know, a, a one of their favorite books being made into a movie, and I, I guess what I would say is try not to look at it as an adaptation. If you do, you're only going to be disappointing yourself because those types of thoughts are rarely ever comforting. Um, if you look at any of your books that they've made, and any of your favorite books that they've made into movies, um, they're going to be missing something. And I'll, I'll give you my own personal example. Um, I'm going to give you two, but my favorite Harry Potter book was Goblet of Fire. And one of the things I loved was the kind of clashing of heads that happened with... Um, Uh, was the kind of clashing of heads that happened with Ron and Hermione over the spew society of society for the promotion of elfish welfare, and I was sad they cut it, but I thought, well, you know, it's kind of a side story. But then, when spoiler alert, it was the reason that Ron and Hermione got together in the end. I was like, well, yeah, okay, you can change it, but that was still a pretty awesome scene. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, but my biggest peeve. And I will say, I know you, know you shouldn't compare, but I'm totally guilty of this. My biggest peeve was in the Aragon movie. Um, the Aragon books, The Inheritance Cycle, are uh, amazing late. books. I love them. They're, I reread them all the time. They're fantastic. And when they made the first movie, it was really, really good. They cut out a few things and they changed some things, but that's to be expected and I wasn't too worried. But they cut what I felt was kind of important stuff, and it really kind of made me upset because you've got essentially you've got you know a good good story that goes on for three more books that people love and the story is just rich with history and diversity and all these different characters and yes it, it would pro I imagine it would get harder to tell the story as it went on because you've got um Oh, English, I speak it sometimes. You've got, um... Uh, you've got... <coughs> um, you know, multiple narrators going in the last three books. It jumps from Naswada to Roran to Aragon, and it just kind of goes back and forth. So that, I totally understood it would be difficult, but... They cut out characters and storylines that are so important later on in the books that it's just... It kind of just made me sad, but... Um, 
like I said, on its own, the movie is great. And I know that's a big complaint with the third Harry Potter movie, that, you know, they mucked up so much the backstory for the Marauders, and they just, it wasn't, you know, they just, they ruined it. I was like, well, they didn't ruin it. They made a good movie. Yes, they cut stuff, but you have to realize, in the interest of time, they can't keep everything that they want, that we'd want them to. All right, well, we're going to do this. So, yeah, I guess, I don't know, I think that if you go into a movie that's based on a book with the expectation that you're gonna, with the expectation that you're going to, um, you know, be disappointed, you're gonna be disappointed because you know they can't keep everything. So if you go into it saying, as long as they keep to the main story, you're okay. And I will give you one example where they completely deviated from the story and it really ticked me off, which was My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Pico. Um, they changed the ending. I'm not going to tell you what it was. For those of you that know the book, just know, um, it basically it happens backwards, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't really say what the ending is without really spoiling it. And it's a good book, and I, I, would, I really think you guys should read it. Not that that'll happen, because really, who's going to read a book based on my recommendation? But um, what I will say is, when you change the ending of a story, you change kind of what you take away from it when you leave. And so I think it's kind of a huge disappointment when they alter a lot of it. Um, but again, you have to remember, it's a movie, it's not a book. It's a different medium, and they have to do, they have to tell stories in ways that apply to the medium. And I'm grabbing a halls because my throat hurts. Okay. What am I going to do? Well. Mm. You are going to be silenced, first of all. much all I have to say on that. Just, you know, when you're going to a movie, try and be optimistic about, pardon me, try and be optimistic about what they're going to do, and if it's completely horrible, it's completely horrible, but you still have the book to go back to. But I think with this movie, The Fault in Our Stars, the right people found each other at the right time, and John Green was there, and he said it was good, and he's the author, so if he thinks it's good, a okay by me. And there you have it. Woohoo! Oh, and I have a hundred, which means I can buy a pack of cards. So, I will do that quickly. And we'll see what I got. I got the uh, Murloc Legendary. Um, I got. I ended up getting all the Murlocs. I bought a few packs, so I ended up getting the Murloc Legendary. So I was very excited about that. All right. Regular. Regular. Oh, very nice. Okay. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. And yeah, let me know um, what you guys thought of the Tiffios trailer, if you saw it, and if you're excited to see the movie. If you haven't read the book, watch the Tiffios trailer anyway, and tell me if you're interested in seeing the movie. So, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.